The central nervous system of the human body contains the spinal cord and the brain. So let's begin by looking at the brain. So let's suppose we look at the side view of the brain and we take a cross section so that we obtain the following diagram. So this is the cross sectional view of the side of our brain. Now, the brain contains three important sections. We have the upper portion known as the forebrain, that's the light purple region here. We have the midbrain, that's the center green region, and we have the hindbrain, that's the lower portion, that is shown in dark purple. Now, the forebrain and the hindbrain can be broken down into two subdivisions. In the case of the forebrain, we have our telencephalon and diencephalon regions. For the hindbrain, we have the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. The midbrain consists of the mesencephalon. Now, the telencephalon contains three important structures. We have the cerebrum, which is this entire structure here. We have our hippocampus, this section here, and we also have the basal ganglia. The diencephalon contains the thalamus and the hypothalamus, this in this section, while the midbrain is this green section here. Now, the, uh, the hindbrain contains the metencephalon that has the cerebellum and the pons, while the melencephalon contain, the myelencephalon consists of our medulla. So let's go through each one of these structures and discuss what the function of these structures is. And let's begin with the telencephalon region of the forebrain. So that contains the cerebrum, the hippocampus, and the basal ganglia. Now the basal ganglia is simply a collection of cells found at the bottom of the forebrain. So basal means to be at the bottom of, to be at the base. Ganglia means a collection of cells, a collection of neurons. So a gang of cells. And so basal ganglia is a collection of cells at the bottom of the forebrain. And the role that the basal ganglia plays is to control our voluntary actions, our voluntary movements. Now, the hippocampus is a structure, it's this structure here that plays a role in the limbic system of our body. And the hippocampus plays a role in memory. Now, what about our cerebrum? Well, the cerebrum is the structure, the forebrain, that basically makes us human. It gives us the ability to think, it gives us the ability to reason, it gives us logic and intuition, it also gives us the ability to control our emotions and feelings and, and to control our voluntary action. Now, the cerebrum is a pretty large structure. It takes up this entire region here. And the cerebrum consists of the left and the right cerebral hemispheres. So the left and the right hemispheres inside the cerebrum are connected by a bridge. And this bridge of cells is known as the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a network of myelinated cells that connects the left to the right hemisphere of our cerebrum. Now, the outermost and the topmost portion of our cerebrum is a section known as the cerebral cortex. And within our cerebral cortex, we have the higher level functioning processes taking place. So that is our telencephalon. It contains the cerebrum, the hippocampus, and the basal ganglia. Let's move on to our diencephalon of the forebrain. The diencephalon contains our thalamus and the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus we're going to discuss in detail when we're going to look at the endocrine system. The hypothalamus is basically the control center of the endocrine system because it controls the pituitary gland, the master gland of our endocrine system. What about the thalamus? Well, the thalamus, in many different ways, is like the secretary of our cerebrum. What that means is it relays sensory and motor signals to and from our cerebrum. In, uh, and inside our cerebrum, once those signals go inside our cerebrum, that's where we process and integrate that information. Now, what about the midbrain? The midbrain consists of the mesencephalon, which is this green section here. 
and notice that the midbrain is situated right between our forebrain and the hindbrain. So being situated between the forebrain and the hindbrain, this small section basically relays auditory and visual information between the top portion and the bottom portion of the brain. And our midbrain is also involved in controlling the movement of our eyes. So let's move on to the hindbrain, the lower portion of the brain that consists of these many structures. So within the metencephalon, we have the cerebellum and the pons. Within the myelencephalon, we have our medulla, also known as the medulla oblongata. Now, let's discuss our cerebellum. The cerebellum, because it looks like a little brain, sometimes we call the cerebellum the little brain. So notice that we have the same infolds on the cerebellum that we have on the cerebrum of our forebrain. Now, the cerebellum's function is to basically control and coordinate the movement of our muscles. And although the cerebellum cannot actually initiate the movement of our muscles, it does coordinate the movement and precision timing of our muscles, our voluntary motions. Now, alcohol affects this part of the brain. So when we drink alcohol, that affects the regulation and control of our cerebellum. And that's exactly why if we drink too much, we end up stumbling and our coordination is not as good as it is when we're sober because alcohol affects the functionality of our cerebellum. Now, what about our myelencephalon? So, the myelencephalon contains our medulla, also known as the medulla oblongata. And what our medulla actually does is it controls things like breathing, it controls our ventilation rate, our respiratory rate, it controls our heart rate, as well as blood pressure, and other automatic or involuntary motion. For example, it controls vomiting. So we have the forebrain, we have the midbrain, and we have the hindbrain. Now let's discuss our spinal cord. Now the spinal cord basically is found below the medulla and it, and it extends all the way down our body and to the lower back of our body. So if we take the cross-sectional view of our uh, spinal cord, we get the following diagram. And notice, just like the brain consists of white and gray matter, our spinal cord also consists of white and gray matter. So the spinal cord consists of bone and cartilage and also of our neurons. Now white matter basically means our neurons do have myelination while the gray matter uh, have neurons that do not have myelination on their axons. So the big difference between the brain and a spinal cord is on the brain, the gray matter is found towards the outside and the white matter is found inside. For the spinal cord, our white matter is on the outside. This is the white matter and the gray matter is on the inside. This is the gray matter. So the spinal cord can also be broken down into four regions. We have the cervical region, the topmost portion, we have the thoracic region, then we have our uh, lumbar region, and then we have our sacral region. So the spinal cord is broken down into four segments, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. Now, the role of the spinal cord is basically to accept electrical signals from the peripheral system and send those signals to the brain as well as vice versa, to receive the electrical signals from the brain and to send them out to different types of organs and tissues and muscles found inside our body. Now, the spinal cord actually is capable of expressing its own arc, its own simple reflex arc, without actually going into our brain. So this arc looks something like this. So let's suppose I pinch myself and what happens is the receptors on my finger basically translate that pressure into an electrical signal which is picked up by the sensory neuron. And the sensory neuron basically travels to the back portion of our spinal cord known as the dorsal portion. 
So this is the sensory neuron. It picks up that electrical signal and gives that electrical signal to an interneuron that is shown in brown found in the gray matter of our spinal cord. And then that interneuron without actually translating that information to the brain, relaying that information to the brain, basically gives it right back to the motor neuron that travels away from the front portion of our uh, spinal cord known as the ventral side and back to our finger, my finger so that I remove my hand really quickly. So this is known as the simple reflex arc. So once again, the sensory neurons traveling into our spinal cord always travel or enter from the back side, the dorsal side, and the ganglia, the neurons of the peripheral nervous system next to our spinal cord is known as the dorsal root ganglia. So the sensory neurons enter from the back and the motor neurons exit from the front, which is known as the ventral side. So the spinal cord is basically involved with not only integrating the information, but it's also involved in accepting and sending information out to different parts of the body. So the spinal cord and the brain make up the central nervous system of the body.